Now, the death of Robert Williams has not only caused an outpouring of grief and shock, it's also raised the very serious issue of depression. Now, tragically, suicide remains the leading cause of death for Australians age between 15 and 44. And for those left behind, there are always unanswered questions. What could I have done? How could I have helped? We touched on this during the Angels segment yesterday, and I said we'd follow it up this morning. And to help us and help others, I'm joined by the chairman of Lifeline, John Brogdon. John, good morning to you. G'day, David. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding about depression and suicide. What are the biggest misconceptions that we have? Because I often say, unless you've been exposed to it, you've got no idea. Without a doubt, the biggest mis misconception is that you shouldn't talk about it. Well, we've sort of grown up with a great shame associated with suicide. People would in the past actually fabricate reasons why somebody died, they'd had a heart attack rather than taking their own life, because there was such shame. Yep. What all of the research shows today is you're better to talk about it than to not talk about it. And this is very hard. I mean, if you're the parent of a teenage child who you think is under incredible stress or pressure, going off the rails, really worrying you, you would automatically think, well, I shouldn't talk to them about suicide because well, I'll put thought in their mind. Exactly right. All the research says the best thing to do is to draw it out, to talk about is it. Is that right? Yes. Yes, that's the biggest myth. OK, how do you start, though? Because a lot of people are really confronted by this and they say, are. well... Gee, uh, I'm embarrassed to talk about it. What do I say? What if I make it worse? Give yeah, us some pointers. Well, by drawing it out, you will almost certainly make it better. So you do need to confront the issue. You do need to ask somebody directly how they are and directly what so you can blunt. do. So be blunt. Yeah, and be, be direct. I mean, this is one of the most difficult but important conversations you could ever have with anyone. So right. don't pussyfoot around. Go straight to the point. So, so don't say how you just well, how you're feeling. That, but look, you know, are you, do, you feel you might be, do you feel you might harm yourself? Are you feeling suicidal? I think that, that, will, that is such a shock to somebody. It could draw them out. And many will say And also, yes. is that a comfort to the person as well to say, well, here's a person who really does care for me, I can take them into my confidence? Yeah, it is. And once, once they say yes, that's the time to stay with them. Don't leave them. Stay right. with them. It's really important. And get them the help they need. I mean, you can ring Lifeline. Yeah. And you can ask somebody at Lifeline for some advice on what to do. You can talk to your own doctor and say, listen, I'm worried about X, Y, Z, yeah. my friend, my, my son, my daughter. What, what about social media? How harmful has that become? We've heard Robert Williams' daughter closed her Twitter, Twitter yeah. account overnight because of the trolls on it. Is this adding another powerful level? Of negativity, yes. without a doubt. There's no doubt. And, I mean, obviously it's incredibly cowardly to go and do that sort of stuff and incredibly hurtful and harmful. But I think in the past where you couldn't communicate these things so quickly and in such a wide fashion. So what we're seeing is young people certainly are being uh, bullied, being yeah. victimised, being hurt by social media in a way they haven't seen before. OK. We always put up Lifeline's contact details when, whenever we yeah. cover stories like this. Do you have enough support? How busy are you? Are people taking ad advantage of the facilities that you offer? Yeah, well, they, they certainly are. This year we'll answer 860,000 telephone calls. We reckon, yes. 860,000? Correct. 30% oh, of whom man. are suicidal. And 10 times a day on average, Koshi, we will actually assess that a person's in such a level of crisis that we'll have their call traced by the police and ambulance and send somebody to where they are to directly intervene. That's ten times a day. That's God. life and death. So we think by the end of 2015 we'll be taking a million calls a year. With Robin Williams' death on Tuesday, we had a 25% increase in our calls and the same again yesterday. Do you have enough funding? We don't. Uh, we get we get well funded. In, well, we get funded by the federal and by a number of state governments. Yeah. The business community is pretty generous, but we we need more money. Our growth is just the growth in the number of calls is just extraordinary. Yeah. Nat Nat's got a friend who volunteers for Lifeline, and she was saying, you know, all the time you're putting out calls to bring in extra people. Yeah, yeah. Can you spare some hours? Can you do this? You shouldn't have to. You should have. How much extra do you need for a fully functioning lifeline? Well, on our numbers at the moment, the way they're travelling, we're answering about 87, 89% of our calls. 
uh, that's better than last year, better than the year before. So we're certainly improving what we're doing. And I don't want to discourage people from calling no. us. But if we did get, I don't know, another 5 or $6 million a year, that would make a massive difference for us. In the overall scheme of things. It's not uh, a lot. What government budgets are. Yeah. And business and, and other supplies. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, mate. Uh, you do a great job oh, there. Appreciate and that. look, as we say, if you know anyone in strife, Lifeline is a place to go. And also take John's advice. Don't be embarrassed. Come forward. Be blunt with a friend or relative who you're concerned about. Great advice, Sam. Absolutely. Brilliant segment. I'm so glad we did that. I'm sure that's going to reach a lot of people. Nice work.